Okay. If you call the roll, please, Daniel. Councilmember Rebecca Chase Williams, District One. Here. Councilmember Jim Iyer, District Two. Here. Councilmember Bates Madison, District Three. Here. Councilmember Joe Gevia, District Four. Present. Mayor Davis, we have a quorum. All right. Uh, we have some guests with us tonight from St. Martin's Cub Scout Pack 563. All right. Are y'all going to lead us in the pledge? All right, come on down. And we'll get some pictures after it's all done. Everybody stand, please. How about you guys step up here for a second? We'll get a picture. Hey, fella, come on down. Come on up to the microphone and introduce yourself and tell us where you go to school and all that. Hello, my name is Gwen Scott. I go to St. Martin Episcopal School. I am 10 years old and I'm in the fourth grade. All right. Hey, my name is Joseph McGee. Um, I go to St. Martin's Episcopal School. I'm in the fourth grade. I'm nine. All right. I'm Jamie Hebert, and I'm um, in fourth grade, and I'm 10 years old. All right. Watch don't get trapped by the wire. Hi, I'm Tyler Morgan, and I'm in the fourth grade at St. Martin's Episcopal School. All right. Want to introduce yourself or anything like that? Um, I'm Doug Morgan, and I'm the assistant cup master at St. Martin's Episcopal School Cub Scout Troop, and we're very pleased to be here tonight. Uh, this helps us with our citizenship <coughs> that we're working on. Maybe, maybe, maybe now they'll get a public speaking badge too. <laughs> I want to give, excuse me, I want to give a special welcome to my neighbor, Joseph, and his dad, who were both here, and I just bought popcorn from them, which is the right thing to do in the fall from Boy Scouts, so if you haven't bought your popcorn, be sure you find your neighborhood Boy Scout. I have not bought my popcorn, so I'm a customer. All right. Y'all come up and get a um, picture, and we'll let you hold the gavel and all that. Yes, it's on. Okay. Opening remarks. We have a couple of announcements. We have food trucks. We have food trucks again tomorrow, Wednesday night. That's tomorrow night, and that'll that'll be going through the end of October. So the last one is what day? The thirtieth. Be a Halloween themed food truck event. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. The um, of the charrettes. We have a. Uh, uh, charrettes at the public, we encourage all the citizens to participate in on the MARTA station TOD. The big parking lot behind the MARTA station there has been designated a TOD. It's one of the top three hottest areas for a TODs to be designated. And there's going to be a development coming down there. And we want the citizens' input on how we think, that, how y'all think that the vision for that property should be and how it should tie in with walkability and transportation and, and living livability. Uh, the first charrette 
the uh, charrette is on some Sunday, October 20th, and it's through Thursday, October 24th. So you can come to that first event and stay all through the week. But before that, there are also some other ones. But the actual charrette will happen on the 20th, that's Sunday, and through Thursday, October 24th at uh, 6.30. And where are these going to be held? Oglethorpe Presbyterian. Oglethorpe Presbyterian. And then um, <laughs> next Monday at 8.30, 6.30, there's a transportation planning uh, background session. And that's uh, uh, for planning, putting the pieces together for a multimodal uh, framework for our transportation plan. And then the next uh, Thursday, October 17th at 6.30, at Mellow Mushroom, there's a workforce housing um, kind of seminar. And so those are just background sessions, but the, the, the charrette is going to be the week of October 20th through October 24th, which is my birthday, by the way. So good birthday, October 24th, my birthday. Well, thank you, thank you. Might get a bag of popcorn. Yes. <laughs> Um, it's it's going to be interesting because it's going to be the first. This is kind of going to lead up to our comprehensive plan, where we're going to have similar type of sessions with our citizenry, and we really encourage everybody to come give their two cents uh, and, and give us what your vision you think your vision should, the vision for Brookhaven's transportation, for its zoning, for its housing, for the retail and residential and uh, the commercial, how it should look over the next 10, 20 years. So, the charrette should be a good primer for people who want to get involved in that process. So. It'll be a very open and friendly environment. There'll be no arguing or shouting, just be people giving their opinions on things. So uh, anybody else have any comments about the charrette? You know, the term charrette was sort of something new uh, to me until I, I participated in one over to, uh, uh, that the school district ran. But really, they're quite uh, good uh, focus groups and discussion groups. And so it isn't just somebody talking, you listen. This is asking for your opinions and your input on the kind of uh, development that we want to see at the MARTA station in particular, and along that whole overlay, which uh, extends along Peachtree Road. So uh, please come out and um, make your voices heard. Yeah, just for those that are curious, the word charrette, of course, is a French word. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. You seem, to, you, you seem to know all the French pronunciations. But uh, it just is, it means little wagon. And it was a little wagon that the, that the, in the French architectural schools back a couple hundred years ago. If you wanted your idea to get put in for, in for a presentation or be considered, you had to have it thrown on the wagon before it went by your room. So we're going to have a wagon for everybody to put their ideas in. That's what it's about. It won't be an actual wagon, but that's what the, the middle picture should be. Megan, can we get the schedule for the charrette on the web page? It is. They're all on the community calendar. They are? Okay, good. Thank They're you. They're on the community calendar on the uh, website, brookhavenga.gov. Okay. Anybody else have anything they want to say during the open remarks? Joe? Yeah, tomorrow is International Walk to School Day um, for parents that have uh, students. And uh, we'll be, uh, Chief Yandora and myself will be participating um, at the Woodward Elementary School. Where does it begin and end and all that? You just 1 30 and so you reach your home. So you go home from the school? We're walking home from the school, yes. Okay. Maybe walking to Florida, maybe? <laughs> and we're going to be wearing. Uh, we'll be wearing clothes. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, agenda approval. So we um, I think we have an amendment possible for this agenda. Um, I want. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion that we um, add to the agenda uh, a motion to appoint a new interim city attorney. Is there a second? Seconded. All right. Any discussion? <clears throat> okay. Uh, the discussion is where, where are we going? Right, right after this? We'll have a discussion on this motion, then we'll have another motion right okay. after. Uh, all in favor of adopting the uh, amendment as stated by Councilwoman Woman Williams, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Is there another motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we appoint Tom Curry of Coleman, <coughs> partner at Coleman Tally, to. Uh, to become interim city attorney for the city of Brookhaven. I second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of my appointment of Tom Curry as city attorney signify, or is there any discussion on that, first off? Okay. All in favor of this appointment signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. <laughs> Mr. Curry, if you'd come forward, you're the new city attorney. I want a little hand for that.
you'd like to say a few words? Uh, I'll, I'll just give you a little background before Tom gets up there. But um, Tom has got a lot of uh, management experience in his firm, which is very important to me uh, as mayor to have someone as your city attorney who knows how to manage uh, people who work for him and manage relationships within the city and work well with the city manager. Um, but he's, he's got a wealth of experience. His firm has uh, city attorneys in Valdosta and um, Adel and uh, a couple other places. And he's got county, they do county work in Eccles County and some other counties. But uh, he specializes in public finance, uh, real estate development, and um, affordable housing, things of that nature. But uh, this, our, our city attorney, we've, we've talked at length about how we desire this to be set up. We're going to have a city attorney, like I said, that manages, but we'll have specialists that will be uh, kind of appointed or utilized for land use, uh, uh, bonding, community development, things of that nature. Uh, some will come from some of their expertise, of course, will come from Mr. Curry, some from people on his staff, and some from some of the firms that we've uh, interviewed uh, for this position as well. But, Tom, if you'd like to come up and just give us a little statement uh, in your new position, I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, that's going to have to come way up there. <laughs> um, Brad's coming. Brad's coming to lift it up there for you. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Mayor and Council, it's, uh, it's very humble and it's a, certainly a privilege to be here this evening to have the opportunity to serve the city the citizens of Brookhaven as well as to serve this council. Um, we look very forward to this as as you all know our firm has been doing municipal work for over 50 years. Uh, we ventured into the Atlanta market about nine years ago and um, we're happy to, to the fact that you have appointed me and my firm to be the city attorney. Uh, we certainly look forward to working with you, looking forward to working with Marie, as well as all of the other department heads, as well as the chief with that. I do want to make one comment about the uh, retiring city attorney, uh, Mr. Bill Riley. He should be complimented for uh, his efforts and his legal skills in getting this city to where it is today and the incorporation of the city. Um, He's, if you look at where you are after nine months, he's been a critical part in that. And I look forward to taking that even further and working with you to take that even further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bill. <clears throat> Bill, I called him Bill already. <laughs> I'd, like to note, I'd like, also like to note that um, Brookhaven resident and one of my neighbors, Keith Jernigan, if you'd stand, Keith, he's one of the... Uh, uh, principals in the firm, and he'll be, I'm sure, doing some kind of work here. And uh, if you have anybody else you want to introduce, Tom, yeah. I'd like to introduce my my lovely wife. That's a good yeah. idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> Mary Jo, who is who is here, and she has uh, been my my main supporter. And then also with us, with besides Keith, we have Harrison Coleman, um, who is my partner, and also Laura Cosgray. Uh, our managing partner, Russ Henry, was on his way back from Nashville, and uh, when I last spoke with him, he was about two and a half hours out and wasn't able to make it, but was sorry that he couldn't be here. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all, and welcome to Brookhaven. Are we uh, permitted to make comments? Sure. I'd just like to add, um, please be seated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. No. <laughs> um, many of you, if you come to council meetings, um, you'll notice that Tom is sat in this audience many, many times, so he's not just coming here as an attorney for the first time and being appointed. Um, it's pretty obvious his interest um, in what's going on with the city it has been uh, proven. So Tom, I, I thank you. you know, your, your interest was sincere. I think it's been, uh, uh, it's, you're gonna have an opportunity to take advantage of all that you learned and what we talked about over the last couple of months, so welcome aboard. All right, thank you, Mr. Gabriel. Uh -huh. I'd just like to add my welcome. We, we look forward to working with you. And uh, I just want to say for those of you who weren't here at the work session when uh, Bill Riley was here, we did give him uh, a big round of congratulations. He did a stellar job for us from even before the city, um, even before we were sworn in and got us through this um, 
this uh, difficult period of startup. Uh, he was uniquely qualified to do that, and uh, um, I think we'll be forever grateful uh, for his service. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? All right. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have to move with the agenda approval. Marie, if you'll go ahead and... Uh, yes, um, Mr. Mayor, the next item on the agenda is, is your public comment. Okay. Anybody have any comment? <coughs> Just fill out a form and drop it off with Daniel at the front here, if you would. You can, br you can bring it on down. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Good evening. It's nice to see you all. Um, I'm Betsy Eggers, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight to represent the North Fork Connectors. We are a nonprofit who have just been incorporated, and our goal is to facilitate a new linear park along the North Fork of Peachtree Creek. We are excited about this being the kickoff night because on the agenda, is one of the big potential park um, <coughs> advocates um, because one mile of the North Fork of Peachtree Creek runs through Century Center. So this is a great night, a great opportunity, and this is the first time we've come in public to proclaim that, that we are here <coughs> to work in partnership with the city. As a nonprofit, we work in partnership with the businesses along the creek and a nonprofit can bring funds and ideas and an energy that that goes beyond what the city can do. Um, and with the city, we would work hand in hand to make this a reality. So, what's important about the North Fork of Peachtree Creek is that it's a very important resource for the city of Brookhaven. It carries our rainwater. It prevents flooding of homes and businesses. It provides water for food and food for birds and wildlife. And look, it's right there on your logo that the, the, the North Fork of Peachtree Creek is an important <laughs> asset to us. The linear park we envision to be a walking trail, a bike path, and a kayakable tree, creek that extends as you go upstream from the convergence around Lindbergh and Georgia 400 to go all the way through Brookhaven and all the way to Mercer University and beyond. It will be an asset attracting people to the communities and the businesses that surround the creek. Like a mode of transportation that it was hundreds of years ago, it will serve as a naturally beautiful way for walkers and cyclers and cyclists and paddlers to go from place to place. Because the land is floodplain, it can't have buildings, but it can have bike paths and walking trails. It can have restaurants and coffee shops and bike rentals that overlook the linear park. We're here tonight to create a partnership with business and the city. And we know that the linear park will and can happen. We encourage Highwoods and the city of Brookhaven to share in this vision and to be sure and ensure that it happens that it's not just talked about, but that you do the things where it can happen. I ask Highwoods tonight to commit to building one-fourth of the park. That would be on their property. And it would be a public asset, not just an asset for the people who work there to use. If they build their part on their property, then it will make it easier for the next three miles to be built as well. Theoretically, Century Center could be a gated work community that excludes the public. Please, tonight, commissioners, have this vision for the city and create a le legacy for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Mm -hmm. okay. Ronnie Mayor. This is a very nice presentation we got from Miss Eggers now, Ronnie. I hope you can live up to that. <laughs> Betsy had been involved in Brookhaven way before any of y'all even thought about running Brookhaven, her and her husband, Jack. So I have to give them a thumbs up because we have, you know, the, 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 there's always been that eight or 10, 15 people. They're one of them, her and her husband, Jack. 
Uh, I'm Ronnie Mayer, Ashford Park, Brookhaven community leaders, uh, community activists, whatever. Uh, I've got a logo here of a shirt that I've already showed to your city manager. It has, it's not like the shirt that you have. I've added a little something to it, put a little snap and pizzazz to it. What I want to do is I want to pay to print up these shirts. I want to sell them at the Arts Festival in two weeks. I will show all the figures of how many shirts I order, how many shirts we sell. Every penny is going to go into a tree fund for Peachtree Road. I will work with your city manager with everything that's, that's all done. And we will, uh, she's even going to be with y'all to pick out the trees. But this is just for a tree fund, just for, for like from Waffle House to Osborne Road for right now. Uh, here it is right here. And all that we did is you got your logo and I just add a little, little, little finesse where else but. So for all y'all who live in Brookhaven, there it is. What else, where else but Brookhaven. There's no other place to live but Brookhaven. So it just adds a little bit of snap to it. And I figure we can sell these short sleeve shirts for 12 to 15 and for a long sleeve for either, either 20 or 25 plus you're going to tell everybody it's going just to the tree fund i need y'all's vote and i need it kind of quick because we're running out of time we've got a bunch of t-shirts to print up if you approve it okay that's number one number two we had a, a little a function at brookhaven park on saturday i think it turned out yeah all right it wasn't bad it wasn't good but the mess was not cleaned up sunday morning there was 3,500 people in a 5K running, and I was real upset about 8 o'clock in the morning. I drove down the road and still saw the signs, trash, and everything all out in the roadway, and it wasn't cleaned up. So from now on, if we have functions, we need to get everything in order, you know, if we're going to have functions, if it's going to be cleaned up that night or early, early the next morning, because I didn't even know we were having the fun run. Uh, I think that's about it. It might be something else. I'll, let me think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. All right. Next. Bill Lowe. Hello. I am Bill Lowe. I'm from out of town, unincorporated to cab, right up the street. Um, first off, what I'm going to say may sound counterproductive to the park idea, but I like it. I'm for it no matter what happens. I, I think that's a great idea. I grew up playing in that creek from the Mercer area up around Cravey to Echo Swim Club. Swam in it. I wouldn't do it now, but I, I did partake in swimming in that creek. Anyway, um, this is in regards to the annexation of Century Center. Um, at the end of that, I've got something for the pink pony, but that's separate. Please consider deferring this vote until after the Dresden East residents have their vote to annex into Chambly on November 5th. The outcome of the vote on November 5th will determine the future of Century Center and should reduce legal fees for the cities of Brookhaven and Chambly. The only benefit to the city of Brookhaven for voting on this issue before November 5th is to confuse the unincorporated DeKalb residents that will vote on Chambly annexation in November. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one lawyer will definitely benefit from this by having their name associated with a precedent-setting case. Uh, the city of Brookhaven might also want to revisit the zoning, land use, density, and designation changes for Century Center. These are such significant changes without proper studies and definite site plans being submitted. It can only be described as a blank check. It not only sets a precedent for any f possible future annexations to receive whatever zoning changes the property owner wishes as a condition of that annexation, but it may also present future legal expenses for the city by other property owners that do not receive the same special treatment. Now we move on to the Pink Pony. Follies is a club that's similar to the Pink Pony and is located in the annexation area. It is entirely possible that Follies will be grandfathered into Shambly in their current form if this annexation goes through. Brookhaven is billed as a progressive city and Shambly may outprogress you, even though levels of hierarchy deem that Brookhaven is a step above uh, Shambly, for instance, in stature and name. Uh, 
it is possible. This call will be grandfathered in. I would like you to consider revisiting the grandfathering of the Pink Pony. They police themselves. Shambly realizes this with Follies. Um, the Pink Pony doesn't have any residential near them like Follies does. And the residents are not opposed to it being there now. They never have been. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Next. Art Freeman. Art. Art, you brought your own chair? When you get to be this age, <laughs> you got to do something to be comfortable. Okay. I brought my own chair. I brought my own hat. All right. And I'd just like to address, first of all, my sincere appreciation to the city, to Marie and her staff, and to the police department that performed a yeoman service for our festival that we held on Saturday. We did not get quite the attendance that we planned for, but what we did accomplish was that we could have a very high class, well run, well structured, well policed, well beard festival, and at the same time bring a lot of joy and happiness to an awful lot of people. I've received a number of phone calls from the neighbors, from associations, all stating the same thing. This is an annual event we need to have happen in our city, and it will draw from many, many areas other than our own. A little quick comment, though, on Ronnie's remark. The trash and all the rest of that was from the 13.1K Allstate Sunday morning event. We left a clean, beautiful park on Sunday morning, and a number of the dog owners there will be happy to testify to that effect. But again, thank you for the opportunity to allow us and the chamber to have that kind of an event. Thank you, Art. I was out of town, so I missed it, but I'll be there next year. Next. Aubrey of Lyons. Mayor, I just want to thank you and City Council for saying how much I've enjoyed your festivals. Uh, my three-year-old enjoys it. All my 20-year-olds are probably there tomorrow night. They enjoy it. Uh, I just think it's great for the community. I just really like what you're doing. I enjoy Ben Blackman Park. He was a great American, a great veteran, a great congressman, a great lawyer. And he's still living, of course. But uh, I appreciate what you're doing. I, I hope this city continues to move in the direction to become the jewel of the South, as you once said. And we want to work with you when we can. If we can make those T-shirts pink, we'll be glad to help. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next. I have no more comment cards, man. Okay. Ronnie's got another comment. Can you do? You reserve your time to the. Yeah, it's just a half second. All right. I want to. Uh, I want to congratulate our new city attorney. I hope this is going to bring us over the hump, like I said, with the pink pony. And instead of sitting there teetering on the hump, we can start really going the other way than having 80% of our registered voters in Brookhaven saying, leave it alone, let's grandfather it in. Hopefully having some, as I call, fresh meat, free and smile, and it really knows what's going on. Hopefully this will sort of get us over this hump and we're going this way. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. All right, anybody else? All right, public comment section is closed. You want to the consent agenda? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you have four items under the consent agenda. The first three deal with um, meeting minutes. The fourth item is the execution of uh, contracts for purposes of stormwater utility. Is there a motion on four? I move we approve the consent agenda. Uh, excuse me, consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of adopting the consent agenda, so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it's passed. Consent agenda. Announcements. Any announcements? No, sir. You know, I'd just like to uh, mention that uh, our city clerk, Susan Hyatt, is out of the hospital and is home and is uh, well onto the road to recovery. And I saw her this weekend, and she looked great and is just uh, very anxious to come back and be with us. 
Well, can't wait. Uh, yeah, what do you guess? Still my prayers. She apparently made a, re, uh, a remarkable, from a time standpoint, recovery. She's walking with a cane now. <coughs> And hopefully we'll have her back into service, at least working part-time, one or two days a week in the not-too-distant future, which I think is going to be an important part of her recuperation, and uh, we're really looking forward to having her come back. I know Daniel will be thankful. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, all right. I have a, a quick uh, announcement. I, uh, would it be possible that we have Marie present on a little bit of the Beaufort Highway corridor improvement, or, or would you rather just have about, how about reports? Yeah. Just... So, are there any more announcements besides food truck and charrette? <clears throat> we have any dates? We don't have any dates for the comprehensive plan stuff yet, do we? I can give that now, or I can wait till reports. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, if there's no more announcements, that's where we are. Reports. Okay. All right. All right. Reports. Uh, first of all, on the comprehensive plan, I'd like to announce that last Friday uh, we did release. Um, to the public a request for qualifications for a comprehensive plan, a parks and recreation master plan, and a transportation plan. Uh, so that has been done and, and we expect to get quite a bit of response uh, to that and uh, in the next couple of weeks we'll have a pre-bid con conference and then on to receiving uh, proposals for qualifications. So we're excited about doing that because as you all know and you've heard me say this many times and I will say it again. Um, Comprehensive plan is, is truly your roadmap, and it takes in a planning horizon of, of 20 years, uh, which will enable you to uh, look into the future and to see what Brookhaven will look like uh, at the end of the day when it's all built out. From a budgetary standpoint, it will enable us uh, to better predict uh, the cost of services and how we deliver those services in the future uh, as we build out the city. So I'm very excited that uh, within your first year, uh, you are moving uh, quickly and aggressively towards uh, the, the start of a comprehensive plan and, um, as I said, the transportation plan and the Parks and Rec. Uh, I will be coming to you in the next couple of weeks, uh, so I'd ask you to start thinking about it now uh, as to members of the steering committee. I would recommend first and foremost of all your appointed boards and commissions uh, that the chair of each of those boards and commissions um, are, have an automatic seat. Uh, on those steering committees, and if the public is interested, uh, we invite them to um, you know, contact me or the city clerk's office so that we can get names and I can help um, pass those names on to you all in addition to um, names of citizens that you uh, also want to include. I would in, uh, encourage you also to include our business community uh, because this is a comprehensive land use plan which will include all facets of land use development, uh, economic development strategies. So. I'm very excited about that and uh, that we were able to launch that just last Friday. Uh, last um, week, uh, uh, we had uh, interviews for our Beaufort Highway Improvement Plan and um, Councilman Madison, who serves as the liaison to the Development Authority, uh, was present along with myself and our Community Development Director, Susan Cannon, and we interviewed um, three firms, uh, of which were a total of nine firms that submitted uh, their qualifications of interest to the city. Uh, for this plan. So we have um, narrowed that down and um, looking forward to getting a cost proposal and, and negotiating that which will then come back in, in the form of a contract before the mayor and council. Uh, this is a very important step forward to looking at um, opportunities and the highest and best use of how we can uh, market and develop and even redevelop uh, Buford Highway. It will not only include an inventory of the built environment, but it will also look at the regulatory tools that now govern Buford Highway and will provide uh, uh, suggestions and, and uh, uh, ideas of how we can better regulate so that we can better improve and, and create more development opportunities and for the sole purpose of providing uh, retail components, an employment base, one that can expand, and a mixed use of residential uh, along that corridor. Uh, it has great location, which is all about re, uh, real estate, location, 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 right along and parallel to I-85. Uh, if you haven't driven down Buford Highway lately going south, it has the most beautiful view shed of downtown Atlanta, beautiful skyline, uh, which we know in the development world is, is quite valuable. So looking at opportunities on how we can redevelop that that entire section. Um, getting closer to working with, uh, finalizing with DeKalb County, our incentive program for our apartment communities along Buford Highway. So uh, that is yet another incentive tool that we'll be adding. And we will have a incentivized package 
um, uh, varying opportunities to uh, get pioneers to come into to Buford Highway. So uh, a great first step. Once that plan is completed and, and we are looking at about a four to a five month period, we will go through public hearings and eventually at the completion uh, next summer of our comprehensive plan, that will become a part and parcel to the comprehensive plan as well so that the improvements, the uh, uh, suggestions of, of regulatory controls and, and tools uh, can be protected and enforced as development occurs uh, um, along that corridor. So very exciting from the standpoint of planning tools and opportunities. Uh, it, it's what the development community looks for, it's what your residential community expects, and, and it's all about predictability and enables you to better plan and to better finance uh, improvements and services. So thank you. All right. I just had one question, uh, Re. On the steering committees uh, that we that you want some nominations from us, are there separate steering committees for the comp plan, the parks plan, the transportation plan? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up okay. because these will be three separate plans, okay. all occurring at the same time. Okay. The Parks and Rec and the Transportation Plan will finish early. Uh, they're about a four to a five month planning period. Uh, the Comprehensive Plan will take us all the way into uh, July, uh, and then we'll start public hearings. So we would like to have separate steering committee members so that they can focus on that. But there will be um, many opportunities where all three of those plans and those steering committee members will come together because there has to be that integration and sharing of information and um, desires and, and expectations. So uh, three separate uh, is what we're looking for. And, and how large of a committee are you looking for? Um, I would say on the on the transportation plan and the recreation plan, and, and when I say steering committee, these will be the focus group, but anybody in the community is invited to attend these meetings. Uh, I would say somewhere <laughs> around um, 12 to 15, the uh, steering committee for the comprehensive plan, anywhere from 20 to 25 uh, key members. And aside from the steering committee, will there be public meetings throughout that process? Oh, absolutely. Every time. Yes. Parks and those types of oh, things. yes, absolutely. I mean, we'll have kickoff meetings for every one of those plans, and, and not only will the steering committee members be there, um, we invite the community to come, too. And, and I want to make mention, too, of, of the steering committee members are going to be integrated within your community members. They're not going to sit up at a, a dais. They're, they're going to be part and parcel of, of, uh, of community engagement. Uh, but these will be people that we will, um, you know, be referring to and, and getting information out to because we hope each of those steering committee members will bring 10 of their friends uh, to these meetings. So we want a lot of participation and, again, we want the business community to be a, a major part of this because, again, we're looking at the residential side and we're looking at the business side. Uh, so... Uh, requirements of the Brookhaven resident? Yes, absolutely. Uh, as a businessman, as long as they're doing business in the city of Brookhaven? As long as they're doing business in Brookhaven, yes. Okay. Uh, Actually, do you think it might be a, an opportunity to post what the requirements of being uh, on a steering committee would be so somebody knows? Yes, we knows? can do that, and I can get with communications, and we can get that information out. Um, and maybe both post that? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, post it I, and get the press release out and just notify the media about what we're looking for. You also want to bring in stakeholders who may not be in business in Brookhaven but might be identified as potential candidates for Brookhaven. So, you right. know, I'd, I'd say let's caution not to be too exclusive. Yeah, whatever it is, let's just make sure we right. state it. Right. And that's why, you know, it's, it's not just for steering committee members only. Right. It's for, you know, anybody that has an interest. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't require a steering committee to have a good idea. We just want a good idea that can come from somebody that's um, interested in Brookhaven and, and wants to see it succeed. Well, I'd just like to make one comment about the um, uh, all of the nine candidates for the Brookhaven Highway Economic Improvement uh, Corridor project identified the North Fork Peachtree Creek as a yes. tremendous natural resource for yes. the area. And creating uh, linear parks and trail space, uh, that that creek from our southern border, uh, where we meet the city of Atlanta, is only a mile and a half to the Beltline. So you imagine uh, Brookhaven, where you can connect by you know a, a, a natural park, a creek, ride it straight down into the Beltline. At the end of the day, it's about creating vision for that area to stimulate economic development, and then it's not just the location, but it's all about jobs, yes. jobs, mm -hmm. jobs. And that's how we 
you know, hopefully uh, move forward for Brookhaven and creating our, our future and growing our city. Thank you. All right, uh, old business. Yes, old business. Um, if I may, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to take both items one and two since they are um, uh, connected. Mm -hmm. uh, item number one is an ordinance, um, ID 1120. It's annexation case number 1301, Century, Century Center annexation petition. Land lots 195, 196, 201, 203, and 204, 18th District to Cab County, Georgia. Uh, approximately 100 acres, more or less. This is a second read. Uh, item number two is the rezoning uh, uh, ID number 1113, RZ 13-05. It's consideration of rezoning of Century Center Office Park to PC3 Pedestrian Community District, located off of Claremont Road in land lots 195, 196, 201, 203, and 204, 18th District, DeKalb County, Georgia, second read. Um, just as a reminder, uh, you all had a public hearing on these matters back in July and had your first read on uh, both of these cases. Uh, so the information that you have is a recommendation. It is in your uh, packets. It includes uh, four conditions, and I would be happy to read those into the record if you so desire. All Thanks. right. Number one, the subject property shall be developed in substantial accordance with the Century Center Office Park Master Plan and pod description included within the staff recommendation. Number two, pedestrian community district development aspects pertaining to ownership, phasing, transportation, and stormwater management practices shall be executed by the developer in conjunction with the community development director. Number three, any previous development standards or permits approved or issued by DeKalb County at the time of annexation shall be accepted by the city of Brookhaven. And four, any previous conditions of zoning, special land use permits, variances, or other special permits imposed by DeKalb County shall be in effect and shall be <coughs> implemented in conjunction with the master plan. Any such DeKalb County terms and, and imposed conditions by the city of Brookhaven shall be interpreted and implemented by the community development director. Uh, staff is recommending approval. Uh, Joe, do you have a motion? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, as representative for District 4, which is where um, this motion will be in effect, uh, I would like to move to approve the second reading to annex and rezone Century Center as submitted with conditions 1 through 4, as just read by Marie. Um, as a matter of record, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to say, based upon approval, uh, we welcome into our community um, Jim Paquetta and the High Woods organization, as well as the Crumb family with the Marietta, uh, who, the, Mar the Marriott there. And uh, as a city, we would look forward to fostering a very Joe, strong. You got to put that with your in the pub in the discussion uh, part. Yeah, to keep yeah. your motion clean. Right, there. Okay, we'll keep we it clean. Doing, <laughs> are we doing That's just a prelude. Right, okay. Separate. <laughs> just do your motion. We'll keep it clean. Thanks. Both of them. Yes. Both. Right. One and two. So I'm going to move to uh, approve. Both ordinances, and I'll read them for record. Ordinance ID 1120 Annex 13-01, Century Center Annexation Petition. Land lots 195, 196, 201, 203, and 204, 18th District, DeKalb County, Georgia, approximately 100 acres, thereabouts. Second read. Number two, rezoning ordinance ID number 1113, RZ 13-05. Consideration of rezoning of Century Center Office Park to PC3, Pedestrian Community District. Located off of Claremont Road in land lots 195, 196, 201, 203, and 204, 18th District, DeKalb County, Georgia. Second read. Second read. All right. Any discussion? Joe, now you can go. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, pick up. Uh, we look forward to fostering a strong relationship with uh, the two landowners of this property. Um, we think it's going to be very, very strong for all parties. Um, I also want to state, um, I had a conversation uh, when we initially began having uh, meetings here about this issue uh, with Jim Paquetta about the uh, North Fork idea of a trail, and uh, he was very, very excited about that. So uh, this conversation that I had with him had already begun six months earlier between Art Freeman and myself, uh, so it was well being formulated. Uh, so we're really happy with the partnerships that we have here, and we think that uh, down the road, um, it's just going to be um, a phenomenal event for, for both sides of Claremont Road. And um, 
<clears throat> I'm going to also state that, depending on the outcome of this tonight, uh, for the record, that um, we need to be making sure that we take a look at our regional responsibility in that area after this vote, if it goes positive. I just yes. want to be on record for saying that, that sure. we need to look at the impact of this and be prepared to take action that's appropriate. Um, I echo those comments. and um, There's been uh, some scuttlebutt, I guess, that that uh, apparently some people are claiming that Brookhaven didn't want to take any residential properties along with the Century Center area, and that's just untrue. We are willing and able to consider anybody's application for annexation, whether it be commercial or residential, particularly the areas surrounding um, Century Center up to up and past variations, maybe in Plaster Road, mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of get a more equitable dis distribution of the uh, residential with the commercial. So just to want to go on record to say that the city of Brookhaven is open to considering annexation of residential in the Century Center area. So that's that being said, um, and I think we're all in agreement with that up here. Not trying to take a vote, but I, I know that that's uh, been discussed. Um, also in accordance with the annexation law, uh, I want to announce that we have prepared the necessary services for Century Center in addition to our current IGA with the county. We have budgeted three additional police officers uh, to serve the development. And uh, so that's already in our budget. It's already been passed. Um, there's been a lot of due diligence that's been done already on this uh, annexation application. And uh, we're prepared to move forward uh, should the vote uh, allow us to do that tonight. Um, Bates or anybody else, you have any questions or comments? Well, I, I'd... Uh, Might be from the applicant at some point, too. Yeah, I, I'd... Uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Bouquet, if you'd be willing to come up and, and speak, um, uh, because they're just to the effect of, uh, there have been a lot of residents' concerns about um, Highwood's commitment to the green space areas and development of the town center vision. And so uh, if you'd be willing to speak to that, I would sure. love to entertain you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, Highwoods is very excited to become a part of Brookhaven, honored really to be a, become a part of Brookhaven. And uh, <clears throat> some of the council members have asked me about our interest in um, creating this really nice amenity in the North Fork of Peachtree Creek. And we're, we're really excited about it. For us, it offers us an opportunity to bring a terrific amenity to the approximately 3,500 people who work in our park. Um, we own other buildings and other markets, and we have similar amenities, some of our buildings. It's kind of a rare thing to be able to walk out and get onto a green space, jog, or kayak, or walk. Um, for us to be able to leverage onto that linear park, in our park, just fantastic amenity, so we're very enthusiastic about it, and I look forward to the opportunity to help plan and design and develop and, and fund. And you wouldn't have any desire or intention to close off that amenity just to people that live in here? Absolutely house. not. Right. Um, our, our plan is to follow the PC3 designation and create a town center at the very center of Century Center, where Anybody who drives through the park now will see the single-story office buildings, which are 45 years old, and, and, and it's very, very difficult for us to lease those, those buildings, and, and they're really functionally obsolete. So we want to create a town center there and have this fantastic natural resource amenity right there. Very excited for the opportunity. Uh, when you and, and you wouldn't um, mind at some point meeting with Miss Eggers and, and her group about um, with their excitement with that North Fork area and what they are. Not at all. We just met earlier. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. First time. You I look forward to working. Meeting look again. forward to working with her. Part, part of this team. whole evolution, as I alluded to earlier, uh, requires us to have a public section in order to implement some fund availability, and this group surfaced, and boy, they fit the bill to a T. Um, just received their tax-free, tax-exempt uh, status. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Almost. 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 Okay. Well, <laughs> it's, it's there to be soon. It's there to be uh, to be had soon. So the, the synergies, the organicness between how this is evolving is just 
I'm really, really very, very happy about it. And what was just an idea really has, it looks like it has real potential to happen. And as a matter of point, this will be the first park in the fourth district. I mean, this is a park-driven city. We have no parks in the 4th District, and it's not just going to be a pocket park. This could be a statement park. This is going to be a loud statement, and we're really happy to have you a part of, as a part of it. Thank you. Honored to be a part of it. Rebecca? Anything? No, no I'm just... Uh, uh, I, I wasn't clear whether we were going to try to create a memorandum of understanding or just... Uh, I, I clearly hear your message that Marine. you're on board with this, and we welcome it. Um, we, we just want to make sure it, uh, it all happens in the future. Well, and and I think that, that there, you know, have been public comments to that effect. I, I believe the city of Brookhaven has the utmost respect for Mr. Bruschetta and Highwood's properties. The concern is is with future property owners and, and un making sure that they understand that same vision in case, you know, your organization decides to sell the property. Is there... Any uh, suggestions, Marie, that you have to be able to you know, protect the city in, in that regard? In selling the property? No, just to make sure that, you know, that, that intent and, and willingness from Highwood's properties to, to do record. those things. I'm happy to go on record and say that we're willing to work in the near future towards drafting such a memorandum of understanding. And, yeah. and I think... Um, you know, it's, it's something that you know, clearly I, I, we are committed to Century Center. You know, we're, if you understand anything at all about Highwoods, we're a long-term mm -hmm. uh, holder of, of Class A, well-located buildings that are in what we define as infill markets. And this is definitely, most definitely an infill market. And, and uh, our intention is really to hold it forever. Nothing is forever. But when we buy a, a product and, and, and we've owned this park since 97 um, really have no intention of, of ever selling it. There's so much potential in the park um, to improve it and it will become a better location uh, for office um, as time goes on. So it's really, uh, Mr. Madison, I can't say that we're going to own it forever, but I just, it's very difficult for me to envision ever selling it, but I'm very happy to work with the city and draft such a memorandum in the near future. Marie, can we leave that to you to make I'll arrangements? I'll be calling him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for making that commitment. I'm sure that makes a lot of uh, residents and people uh, happy to hear. Um, you know, I, I, I think that sometimes zoning application processes are used to sort of bully developers into mm -hmm. giving sort of concessions for in exchange for zoning. And I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud that Brookhaven... Uh, hopefully it looks to operate under a clear set of rules where our zoning ordinances define the expectations of our developers so that the development community knows where we stand and what the expectations are and we're not playing games with new entrants to the markets or people who want to develop and improve the value of the city of Brookhaven. So thanks for making that commitment. Jim, did you have something? I do. <clears throat> and unfortunately I'm going to be the wet blanket. Uh -oh. First of all, I'm disappointed that that these two motions were, were, were put together as one, uh, while not necessarily opposed to the annexation. Uh, I have strong reservations about the rezoning of this property. Um, and I remind mayor and council that this is the second annexation actually that we've done in the city of Brookhaven. The first was done on December 17th when we brought 14,000 parcels into the city. And at that time we rezoned everything as is, as it was uh, previously designated by the city, or excuse me, by uh, DeKalb County. And we provided no special consideration for those owners to increase their density or to do anything other than give them what they had the day before the, the city came into being, the day before they were annexed into, into the uh, city. Uh, because of that and because of the, uh, quite frankly, I think that uh, we have, we've been hasty in reviewing this, this uh, rezoning and we've not given due consideration of all the facts and, and therefore I cannot support it. I, I think that we need to... Uh, to back up and I, I would hope that uh, we could separate these two because like I said I'm not necessarily opposed to the annexation but I think the rezoning at this time is, is not appropriate and I think that uh, we're showing uh, uh, consideration to a particular owner that we didn't show to the other owners that uh, were brought into the city when we did our first annexation back on December 17.
Mr. Mayor, the, yes. the motions were together, so they right. need to be voted together. Right. Once you call the question. Right. Have you called the question? Well, discussion. I haven't called the question yet. Could we amend the motion to separate them? Yeah. Only, only if the person who made the motion agrees to the amendment. Right. That'd be I'm going to hold firm to my motion. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? <coughs> all right. All in favor of the motion, as stated by Councilman Gevia, signifies by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. No? No. Oh, okay. Opposed, right. whatever. <laughs> Nay. Nay. Thank you. Aye says no. Motion is passed. Welcome to Brookhaven. All right, new business. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, just one item under new business. It's an ordinance ID 1146, an ordinance to amend Chapter 14, land development of the Code of the City of Brookhaven, Georgia, to amend Article 5, 4, Section 14-411A, entitled Floodplain Management Basis for Area of Special Flood Hazard Flood Area Maps and Studies and for Other Purposes. Um, this is a uh, one-read ordinance and, uh, just for... Um, Just for um, uh, clarification, this is not amending uh, Chapter 14 in its entirety. It's just for the floodplain management portion of it. Okay. Mr. So, Mayor, go ahead. I move that we approve Ordinance ID 1146, an ordinance to amend Chapter 14 land development of the Code of the City of Brookhaven, Georgia, to amend Article 4, Section 14-411A, entitled Floodplain Management Basis for Area of Special Flood Hazard flood area maps and studies and for other purposes. Second? Anybody? I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Uh, it, it's my understanding that we're, this is an amendment because there was some um, misinformation about the, the, numbered, uh, the numbers on the maps that were given to us by uh, is it FEMA or someone, right. the agency. Right. EPD. EPD. All right. Okay, so it's just correcting this, this Scribner's error. Is that right? right? Okay. Okay. All in favor of adopting the ordinance, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it's passed. Any other business? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I believe Ms. Williams was going to offer. Uh, uh, I'm going to move that we uh, authorize the, the mayor to sign um, an agreement with the uh, Decatur Fire Marshal okay. uh, as it becomes available, which should be... Uh, within this week, uh, so we can go forth with uh, having our own fire marshal. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussions? I, I just want to say how much I'm looking forward to this because uh, every week we handle calls and uh, delays in buildings uh, that get clogged up in the, the fire marshal uh, um, mess over at, uh, I wish I had a better word for it, over at DeKalb County. I know that Chief O'Brien's been working hard at it, but uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm anxious for us to have our own fire marshal so we can really be a lot more uh, responsive uh, to our builders and our employers. Um, uh, and, and I hate to have to, you know, get city staff to untangle some of these webs to, uh, to get permits, sometimes for something as simple as an awning and sometimes uh, a build out for, um, to bring on 200 new employees like Verizon's trying to do up in Perimeter Summit uh, this week but it's been held up for several weeks with the fire marshal. So I can't wait for this to, to be committed. I'm sorry. Can you give us a quick update of where we are and yes. what sort of the, the, the revised terms are? Yes. Uh, the terms are uh, that the city and city of Brookhaven will enter into an agreement with the city of Decatur. Uh, Decatur has their own uh, fire department, and uh, they have a couple of fire marshals. They have a fire marshal, and then they have some deputy fire marshals. Uh, we will be contracting directly with Decatur for the use of one of their deputy fire marshals. And uh, they will uh, invoice the city, the city of Decatur will, will invoice the city for the time spent for this uh, marshal. And then we will, of course, remit that back. So it's very similar to our arrangements that we have with DeKalb County. But for this purpose with Decatur, it's only for the purposes of plan review and inspection. It is not to include the annual inspections for fire safety and fire exiting and fire plans, which are done annually because of insurance purposes and because of the 
county's requirement on inspections and sprinkler systems. So that function will remain with DeKalb County. I've met with uh, the DeKalb County Chief uh, Attor Assistant Attorney uh, to amend the IGA and between the county and the city whereby they will just remove that section of plan review and inspections of um, uh, buildings of the plans that they've reviewed. So they're amending that and that will come back to the city as well. Will, will they be on site at, at City Hall or will they be They'll going be on site at plans? City Hall. <clears throat> Right. And then will they also be reviewing site plan? For yes, they'll be housed in the community development department, and so they will, you know, function as a city okay. employee. So they'll uh, do both interiors and, and yes. site plan review. Yes. Okay. Is this a full time position? Um, it'll be as full time as we can get it. Right. Um, uh, it is. It is the off duty hours of the deputy marshal, and that can be sometimes four days a week, depending on their shifts or it could be three days a week. So it depends if they're on a weekend shift, then we could probably have them Tuesday through Friday and then they're off that weekend and then they take a few days off there and then they would come back maybe Wednesday through Friday and then they go on weekend shifts. So it, it alters um, in that way. So from your experience so far, and what I've heard, it's been probably one of the biggest clogs in the wheel when it comes to permitting here in the city of Brookhaven. We've done an excellent job, but we hit this clog. It doesn't make any difference. It's the clog. Correct. And that's how we're being rated or viewed. Can you give um, an overall assessment of what the level of performance has been and what you expect to see the improvement be with this person coming on board? I expect to see um, a quick turnaround of, of plan review. Uh, we do have, and, and we have worked very hard on a 10-day turnaround uh, once you submit your plans. Now I will say um, we've brought a logistics team in and so we're looking at a better process of how plan submittal occurs and how that's tracked and we're even talking about uh, the ability for the applicant to be able to track also mm -hmm. uh, without having to call in and, and come in or, or call you all uh, to ask what's going on with their plans. Uh, but we will see uh, this 10-day turnaround I think um, one will be able to turn the plans around from the standpoint of being able to get comments back within that 10-day period. Right now, uh, because of the, the issues related to DeKalb County, and no fault at all, and I appreciate Ms. Williams saying that uh, to Chief O'Brien, it's just so voluminous of the amount of activity in DeKalb County and the shortage of staff that they themselves are faced with. Uh, and it's not just DeKalb County that they're providing the service to unincorporated, it's other cities as well. So um, we will be able to see uh, comments getting back uh, very soon and, and quickly. We have suffered that as well. I mean, we, we talked about very early in our early days of, of startup that our turnaround time would be 10 days. And um, many times we've been able to meet that but many more times we've not been able to meet it because we've been able to review our plans, but then we, like the applicant, are waiting for the, the fire marshal. And there's nothing we can do. We cannot issue a permit. We cannot move forward without the fire marshal signing off. And so uh, it has been um, a, a real encumbrance on our ability to respond to the public, to the development and building community, uh, to be able to turn plans around. And um, so, this now enables us to do that. I'm, I'm very appreciative of Peggy Maris, the city manager. She and I have worked together on this initiative. Uh, very willing and very open and very forthright to, to help us. And um, we, we have a, we went through uh, the state fire marshal's office. So I, I did take care of that. Uh, it is required because all fire marshals, whether they work for a city or a county government, they are the representative of the state fire marshal and that is their function. They take their direction from the state fire marshal. Even though they may ask for time off from their fire chief, they are directed by the, the state fire marshal. And so we had to go through the state fire marshal's office and um, uh, get approval there. We had to show that we truly were incorporated. We had to show that we had uh, an agreement. We had to show that we had a fire marshal identified. So we went through all of those steps and uh, we're very excited about moving forward on this. Now it's just down to the paperwork of getting this uh, taken care of. Uh, the City of Decatur uh, Commission is reviewing it and signing off on it, and we are the next ones up, and as soon as we get that document, uh, we will be ready to go. The last thing we'll do is send it to the State Fire Marshal to show that we have, in fact, had both parties agree, and uh, we'll move forward. Thank you, Marie. 
All in favor of adopting the motion as stated by Councilwoman Williams signifies by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Public comments. Another public comment section. No, no cards, all right. Uh, mayor's comments. I have no comments. Other than welcome again, Mr. Curry and Century Center. Yes. No? I try. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh, we don't need executive session, right, Marie? Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion for adjournment? I move we adjourn. Aye. I second. Any discussion? All in favor of adjournment, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? We're adjourned.